Hi, my name is Andy Jeremy Schrock, and this is my life, only the live version. I was born on a warm February day in Lincoln, Nebraska. My dad's name was Tim, and my mom's name was Bill Murray. Like, her first name was Bill Murray. <laughs> The first year of my life was pretty uneventful. I cried, I slept, I did Sudoku. But literally the very next day after my first birthday party, Dan Aykroyd showed up and stole me from my parents. This might sound like a bad thing, but I mean, it is Dan Aykroyd. So my parents, when finding out, they were, they were cool with it. We even have a funny photo of us all together. And afterwards, they didn't even want me back. So Dan Aykroyd raised me in the beautiful beaches of Naples, Florida. He taught me everything you needed to know about fishing and scuba diving. He was practically a Jedi master at both things. And I was on my way to being the next Darth Vader, or uh, maybe Aquaman? But before I could start my aquatic elementary school, Dan, whom I now call Dad, was hit by a missile from a nearby submarine. He was dead. Instantly, like it was insane how fast he died and I survived without a scrape when I was standing right next to him So here I was at five years old with no parents I decided to skip elementary school and did what any other human would do facing a life crisis I ran away to California and tried to make it big in showbiz I used a Harry Potter wand to enlarge a rabbit and rode him all the way to Santa Monica. I hadn't been there for 20 minutes when a four-year-old, who was also named Andy Jeremy Schrock, pointed his finger at me and yelled that he was going to kill me. Turns out, my biological parents immediately had had another kid after I was kidnapped and named him my name to replace me. If that's not too confusing. They had told him my entire story as soon as he was born, and he had grown a hatred for me. He thought that there should be only one of us. I tried to get out of fighting him, but it was useless. He attacked me with such ferocity that I had no choice but to defend myself and retaliate. We fought for 13 years. Every 20 minutes, he would yell, THERE COULD BE ONLY ONE! You might be thinking, it's impossible to fight for 13 years straight. Well, you are wrong. We did. I didn't even stop once, even to pee. Over the course of this battle, I learned every single martial arts technique that has ever existed. I even learned magic and can throw lightning bolts from my fingers. I eventually learned how to summon a big dragon named Bahamut who came out of the ocean and ate my brother, Andy Jeremy Schrock. Leonardo DiCaprio happened to be there. He filmed it and put it on MySpace. Then, the video blew up on MySpace. I became insanely popular, and literally every single babe in the world wanted to be my girlfriend. You might think that was weird because I was so young, but after a 13-year battle, I was now 18 and had one legit muscle on my shoulder. I really wasn't trying to get a girlfriend per se, but during an interview for HBO, I met a girl named Ham Sandwich. That was literally her name. She was so beautiful and so smart and funny. She even made Kanye West laugh at a knock-knock joke one time. It was love at first sight. Despite all the media attention and opportunities, I took a two-week vacation with her. We traveled to Spain and read books about starfish while laughing at how dumb squirrels looked sometimes. But our perfect trip couldn't last forever. So then, we flew back to LA to hopefully snag some showbiz opportunities. I was nervous that being away for two weeks would have hurt my popularity, but someone had made a re-edit of my battle with my brother and mixed it with baby cats, which are also called kittens, and suddenly, I was even more popular. I was receiving so many offers for TV shows and movies that I could do anything I wanted. The first movie I took was a live action remake of Bambi, where I was Bambi! Like, I got to be the deer! It did so well it won a Golden Globe. After that, I took up a TV series called Where's Bob Now? It was about how leftover sponges affect the giraffe population. It aired for eight seasons and became the most watched show on all T-Mobile sidekick phones. But just before the TV show ended, I discovered Ham Sandwich was cheating on me with Michael Phelps. I was heartbroken. I cried. And I hated the sight of all squirrels. With my TV show coming to a close and my heart a shattered mess, I knew I needed a change. I moved to Aruba and started an apparel company called What The Heck Phelps. The only piece of clothing we made was a t-shirt that had a picture of Michael Phelps' face getting smacked by a stuffed walrus. The shirts, they sold like hotcakes until everyone in the world had three copies each. The shirt won a golden globe. By the time my apparel company was in full swing, I was 30 years old. I had all the money I wanted, four houses, 11 boats, and a car that transformed into a tricycle. But 
I don't know, I still kind of felt empty. So I walked around the world, literally the whole world, to just think and find my peace, to find my nirvana. I traveled over mountains, I swam across lakes, tiptoed across highways, I traveled through it all until I found my nirvana. Dave Grohl was sitting in a coffee shop in Kyoto, Japan. I asked him what to do when he told me I simply needed to forgive Michael Phelps. So I nodded, did a backflip, then Ubered back to LA where Ham Sandwich and Michael Phelps were working on a TV show called Does Anyone Actually Like Pop-Tarts More Than Toaster Strudels? I showed up on set and poured my heart out and told him, let's put it all behind us. The shirts, the anger, everything. This was a little awkward, honestly, because half of the crew on the TV show was actually wearing the shirt that I had made so famous. Michael Phelps, surprisingly enough, was super nice about it. He smiled, shook my hand, and asked if I'd like to do dinner that night. Oh, I said I would love to. I, it felt, I felt amazing, like a huge weight had been lifted from my shoulders, all because of Dave Grohl. I turned to walk away from Michael Phelps, and as soon as I did, I heard a loud electric zap sound. The whole set started screaming. My heart was beating so hard in my chest, you could actually hear it as I whipped around. On the ground lay the body of Michael Phelps. He was holding a knife. He had just been about to stab me in the back. Just beyond him was Dan Aykroyd holding a laser gun. You died, I exclaimed. He smiled and said, no son. I received a magical genie, and with a wish, I had found out your life would unravel this way. So I had to fake my own death to go on an epic quest to Australia to get this laser gun from a guy named Basquith. So I could make it back in time to stop Michael Phelps. My Dan Aykroyd dad and I hugged very emotionally. Tears, crying, emotion. Then, we flew to Dallas, Texas to hang out and catch up on all the missed years. During that trip, we decided to start a French rap group that only writes songs about boats and we upload directly to TikTok. And that's where I'm at now. It hasn't been a normal life, but I've learned lots. And I think I'm going to eat chicken pot pie tonight for dinner. Goodbye, Forks. I love you all. That, I, wow. Even I don't know what to say after that. Uh, as of right now, I'm filming this. I don't know how it came out, but I imagine it was pretty weird. I got the idea of, I, I love the Draw My Life video I did that's actually the truth that I will link at the end of this if you want to see. But I just got the idea, it'd be really funny to do a Draw My Life where I could do whatever I wanted. So I came up with the lie version. Uh, clearly that did not happen to me. I have nothing against Michael Phelps. Um, in fact, every single line I wrote, I didn't really know I was writing it until I wrote it. Like, I just got down the computer and I wrote out this story. And that is the, the, the blah that came out of my mind. Uh, so uh, hopefully this video does well and it becomes the most viewed video of all time so that the world feels like we should get Dan Aykroyd and Michael Phelps and David Gruel to reenact this. I don't know who would play Ham Sandwich. She'd have to be a heck of, heck of an actress. I don't know what I'm saying. Um, so uh, yeah, there you guys go. That was very weird. Uh, I had a lot of fun making it. Uh, I wanna thank Alex, who I handed the footage over to, and he edited it and made it all wonderful. So uh, Alex is in the info in all his glory. So check him out. He's actually been uploading YouTube videos recently, so you can see new content over on Alex Beauty's channel. But um, thank you guys for watching this. It means a lot. Uh, I do videos here all the time. If you wanna see more, just hit the subscribe button. It's free and easy. You just click it um, either way. You have a great day. That's the important part of this. Go forth and make the day yours. I'm done. That's it. The outro is me playing a song.